Hey, it's Matt from Practice Perfect. Welcome to the Accelerated Learning Center. Today we're going to talk about how to set up user account permissions. Let's get started. Step 1. Unless you're the only person running the show at your clinic, there are going to be different staff members using Practice Perfect for different reasons. Knowing this, we've enabled you to add and edit account permissions per user. For example, you may want to restrict your receptionist from creating and editing clinical notes and your provider staff from making changes to the schedule. To access the security settings, select housekeeping and then security from the menu bar at the top of your screen. There are primarily two screens related to users and account permissions in Practice Perfect, security roles and security users. Security users allows you to create new accounts while well, Security Roles essentially allows you to set templates for your new users. For example, you may establish security roles so that all of your therapists have the same permissions, or all of your front desk staff, or all of your managers, etc. Let's begin by taking a look at the Security Users screen. Step 2. The Security user screen is essentially a list of all the users at your clinic. Note that there is no limit to the number of users that you can make. However, there is a limit to the number of people who can log in at the same time, as defined by your contract. Please contact the support department if you wish to activate more concurrent licenses. This view allows you to see several pieces of information about the user namely their username, their role, if they're a provider, their login location, the last time that they logged in, the last time that they logged out, and their view type. Press the green plus sign on the function bar. Step 3. The first tab we'll be taking a look at is the general tab. The fields here pertain to the new user's basic account information. Begin by creating a username and password for the user. Note that there are no length or special character requirements for the password, but both the username and the password cannot contain any spaces. The user is able to change their password at any time after the initial setup. If you'd like to see the password, click Show Password. Note that the username and password are case sensitive. Use the Provider Match field if the user is also a provider at your clinic. For example, the username might be Jay Smith and your provider's name is John Smith. This field allows you to connect the user account with an existing provider profile. The role is tied to the permissions outlined in the security roles. If you'd like to assign a new user a role such as management, admin, or provider, you can do that here. You won't need to go through the next few tabs if you choose a role because the permissions will mirror the specifications outlined in security roles. We'll be going over that shortly. Set the default location code. When this user logs in, it will determine which client list they see, which schedule they will see, etc. Similar to the default location code, use the default billing location to identify the office location that this user should default to. Note that just because you've selected a default for the user, that doesn't mean that they're going to be restricted to seeing just that one location. It only means that that's what they'll first see when they log into Practice Perfect. View type is only really relevant if you are setting up a user account for a provider. All allows them to see all of your provider's reports, schedules, clients, and notes, while self restricts the user to seeing information that is only relevant to them. If you do select self, you can then tick self reports, self clients, self schedules, and self progress notes, meaning that the user will only be able to see those items pertaining to their own patients. Please note that any changes that you make to a user's account permissions will not take effect until the next time the user logs in. Step 4. Next, click on the Data tab. Begin by selecting the office location that these security rules will apply to. Use the rows on the list to indicate if the user can add, edit, delete, or view the data in question. The options with a check mark next to them indicate what the user will have access to. 
Step 5. The next stop on this tour is the Functions tab. Although the options here are different, this chart basically works the same as the one in the Data tab, except the users are simply able to perform the functions, or they are not. Take some time to scroll through the items on this list and check off the functions you want the user to be able to perform. Step 6. When you're done perusing the Functions tab, click on the Reports slash Label slash Form slash Word Documents tab. All of the items in this tab pertain to the running reports and the viewing slash printing permissions for the various documents related to patients and payers. Check off all the options you want the user in question to have access to. Step 7. Lastly, click on the Settings tab. All of the items in this list pertain to the items listed in the Practice Perfect Settings menu. Decide if you'd like the user in question to be able to edit or view the corresponding settings. If you have any questions pertaining to what a specific setting does, please contact our support department to get some more information on that. And while this was only set up for one location, as you can see from the bar here, it's really easy to copy it to all other locations so that you can streamline the permissions across the board. You can do so by simply clicking copy to other locations right here. Step 8. And now it's time to check out the security roles screen. As mentioned earlier, it's basically the same as setting up a user's permissions, except that you can apply them to an entire group, i.e. those occupying a particular role, so that you don't have to repeatedly configure settings for new users or edit security settings for each user when a change is needed. To add a new security role, press the green plus sign on the function bar. The general tab is where you give the role a name and set their view type. It also has a user section where you can see a full list of the users who have been assigned this role. Again, the items listed in data, functions, reports, and settings tab are identical to the tabs in the security user screen. For the sake of this video, I'm going to select a few options for this new role create a user, and assign the role to them. As you can see, all of the options outlined in the security role have been copied over to this user's profile. Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out the other accelerated learning videos at practiceperfectemr.com. Bye for now.